Okay. All right. So let's read in Romans 13, 1. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from who? And the authorities that exist are appointed by who? Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance as who? And those who resist will bring judgment upon themselves. For the rulers are not a terror to who? Good works. But to who? Okay. Do you not want to be afraid of the authorities? Do what is good, and you will have praise for the same. For he is a God, for he is God's minister to you for what? Good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices what? Evil. Therefore, you must be subject to good, not only because of the wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers, attending constantly to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all of their dues, taxes to whom taxes, custom to whom customs, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. All right, turn with me, if you would, to 1 Peter 2. I want you guys to look this up and see this. 1 Peter 2, chapter 13. Because with just reading that, it's talking about our duties toward authority over us. And I am going to need, if a couple guys can move my whiteboard up, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so we're going to look at 1 Peter 2, verse 13. It says, be subject or submit yourself to the, for the Lord's sake for every human institution, whether it be for the king as superior or as governor sent by him, to punish those who do what? Evil. And to praise those that do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as who you are, free, not using your freedom to cover up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. So here we see that in 1 Peter 2 and in... Um, Romans 13, 1 through 7, it's talking about our duties toward godly government. Everybody say that with me. Godly government. Okay. Because God has set up these authorities so that believers and non-believers would have a structure here in this fallen world. You know, um, as I, as I kind of thought about this as I was going through and I just, and so I felt like the Lord was really impromptuing me to understand because the Lord does so many, and, and I call this, has anybody heard of common grace? Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. And, and so there's a difference between a common grace and God gives that to every man upon the earth, whether they're a believer or non-believer. And then there's a saving grace that we all know, the saving grace, which is the grace that we now live under for what Jesus Christ has done for us. But here we see that, you know, God, even through science, he has given man common grace. You know, it's just like he teaches, he taught them to plant by the moon. There's, there's things in the earth because of how the moon and the the I don't know how all that scientific stuff goes, but it's when you put the seed in the ground, if you go by the, if you plant by the moon, then those, that product is going to produce so much more harvest that, and you know, I, I didn't, I, you know, I know my parents and my grandparents, they did this. And I remember when I was doing a garden for the first time, I, I didn't even remember that. And I just remember thinking my plants look horrible. And everybody was talking about, oh, I've got so many tomato plants. And I'm just like, mine were like, you know, they were awful. And so one day I was just asking the Lord, what, you know, what's going on here? And, and he showed me, he said, you know, there's a difference between planting on your own, 
and planting to my uh, specifics. And so I thought, well, so the Lord taught, reminded me about my grandfather's almanac. So I thought, let me go get that. So I started doing that. Wow, what a difference. What a difference because it brought a larger harvest. So what am I saying? There's going to be things that you can put in the ground on your own. It may produce some, but God's saying, wait and do it my way, right? Do it my way. And so here, our authority as believers, we have a duty before God because he set this area up. You know, we see that it rains on the just and the unjust. We know, and we also see this in doctors, that doctors, God has given them the grace, the wisdom, the knowledge, the discernments to help you when you need help. That's a good thing. And so then, you know, and the Lord showed me, he said, you know, and, and the thing of it is, is those doctors can be believers or non-believers, but the grace that God has put upon them to help you is amazing. And so it's the same thing when we come to godly or ungodly government. God has set up this government, and he wants it to stay godly. Why? Because the godly is where the producing of the harvest is going to bring the fullness. Now, are there evil people in the government? We all know there is, right? But God will at times even use them for your protection. Now, can, do they, some of them use it for their own evil? Yes, they do. And we know this. But what I'm wanting you to see, that when we read through this scripture, we have to stop and look to see what it truly means. We can't take a, one of, if you took any of these out of context, you're not going to understand what you as the believer are to believe. You're going to be one of those people that sit in your home. You're going to hear something on the news, and, you, and they're going to tell you, now this is what you must go do. But if you don't know this Word of God, when the Word of God here, it says, so let's just read again here in 1 Peter 2, verse 13. 1 Peter 2, 13. Be subject or submit yourself for the Lord's sake for every human institution, whether it be for the king as superior or governor sent by him, to punish evil and to praise those that do good. So it says right here that the kings and the governors, they are to punish those that do evil and praise those who do good. Amen or oh me. See, and the thing of it is, and this is why I put the chart here, and I know I've got a lot of writing, and I know you probably can't read it because I stood back there and I got, I can't even see that. But anyway, this is God's kingdom of government, okay? When it comes to God and his governmental government, it always has to put God first. And we always start with the individual, which is us. So in these scriptures, and remember, we're going through the book of Romans. We're remembering where we are and what Paul is writing to them about. And he's saying, now look, because they lived in some of the hardest times. Now, we think we live in a lot of hard times. But, you know, I'm very thankful that the people that are overseers do not uh, throw the lions out there and then start throwing some of you and I in there. I'm very thankful for that, aren't you? Okay. And so what I saw, what the Lord showed me, he said, Pat, I always have to be first. And whatever it is that you're getting ready to do in your life, government is no different. God put his government upon this earth for your protection of the believer and for the protection of even the non-believer. You know why? Because he's a good God. And we have to understand because in Matthew 6, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all, not some, not the parts that you like, and then you disregard the parts you don't like, but in all, all things, all the things, and then he will add those things to you. The things that you need, he will add those things to you. But you must put God when? First. But see, with the enemy's kingdom government, 
it's always self. If you listen to people when they start saying, and I know, you know, it, this, it, if you just listen to people, you can tell really spiritually where they are. But when it comes to evil government, it's always about number one. It, because I have to watch out for myself. Nobody watches out for me but me. And so with, I, with the enemy, it's always self. Satan always wants you to put yourself first because that's going to lead to pride, and pride is the key factor of why Satan was kicked out. Then we go here to husbands and wives. We're going to cover some of this, maybe not today, but next week. Husbands and wives. This is talking about government. This is talking about things that God has put in order in order to protect you and I. He's got husbands and wives. What does God's word say? One man to one woman. Okay, here I go. Okay. However God created you, male or female, that's how God created you. He chose you. He chose you and put you in your mother's womb. You had nothing to do with it. And I know there's a big move on this right now, but it's just a lie of the enemy. It's just a lie of the enemy. See, but Satan, he comes here to kill, steal, and destroy any and everything that you are. So we see that for marriage, he always wants to destroy marriage. He has from the very beginning. When he came and talked to Eve in the garden, he talked to Eve. Now, was it just Eve's fault? No, Adam was right there. But see, he came to her because what was he doing? He was wanting to separate them. So he comes to destroy marriage through divorce, kill, steal, and destroy. With children and parents, God has given you the right for your children. He's the one that he, God says, I'm going to give you gifts. Those are called children. And he says, he says, look upon them, watch over them, protect them. And we're going to get into some of that. But the enemy, he says, no, let's abort them. 63 million just in the United States of America since it was since abortion was legal, 63 million children. The enemy says, no, let's just, you know, no marriage and no children. What's he trying to do? He's trying to wipe out the people of God and anyone that would come up against, come up against him. But he doesn't want new generations coming forward. He, does a, he thinks he's going to get rid of you, the remnant. He thinks he's going to get rid of the generations before him. He's trying to do this so that his time would be extended. Because, see, at one point, Jesus is coming back and his time is over. So we see that it says, because, you know, the Satan wants to kill the children either in the womb or out of the womb. He doesn't even care anymore. Just kill them. Or let's wait till they get older. When they get older, we can, you know, we can do the sex change. We can do the transgender. If you're not happy being a little boy, if you're two to three years old, the LGBTQ tells parents, you no longer have the right to tell those children that are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, who they are or what they can and cannot do. No, we say you can't do that. You know what? I got news for you. You know, this is what we go by. This is what we go by. And it's the Word of God. It's always the Word of God of what we always go back to. So we see here at the age of two or three, you can become anything you want to become. If you're a little girl and you don't want to be a boy, you can be a cat. You can be a dog. You know, they had a girl do this. She was eight years of age. She, won, she, she brought a litter pan in. And it was allowed. See, God, when, when the enemy comes 
at people to change things. When you start changing this, you get into some majorly weird things. So, so when, I, when you see this, don't be shocked, okay? Just know they're trying to go too far. Pray for them. Intercede for them. Stand according to God's kingdom. Amen? Because you, you got, listen, you guys are the light of the world. You are. You carry that light where you go. It is extremely important that you now of all times stand up, step out, and speak out the truth of God's word. Amen? Because there's so many things that the Lord is wanting to do. There's so many things that, are, that the Lord right now behind the scenes have been, has been, he's been showing so many things in our government. He's been pulling back the curtain. He's been exposing. It's, one of the, it's an answer to prayer. Because when we see now, see a lot of times within those, la within those last couple of years that we've come through, a lot of times we didn't see God moving. We're starting to see it now. But what God was showing me, just because you don't see it, doesn't mean it's not happening. See, so don't give up. You know, don't throw in the towel. You've come too far. Amen? Because, see, God, God knows that you can handle this. You may say, oh, Pastor, I don't think I can. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. Because if you couldn't handle what's going on in the world today, God would have never put you here. He would have put you back down in the 18th century or somewhere. I'm thankful I live in the 21st century. <laughs> I am so thankful because there's been so much revealed through the Word. There's been an amazing thing. There's been a lot of types of, of waves come through the church, you know, all kinds of different healings and, you know, prosperity and, you know, the grace message and, you know, just being free to know who we are in Christ. There's so many things that I'm thankful for. And then, you know, there's also employee to employer. God says, love one another as I've loved you. But the enemy says, no, 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 no. Forget your employer. You're the one in charge. It's all about self. See, with the enemy, it's always going to be about self. And everyone else, the younger to the older, the younger to the, it talks in Scripture, it says that we are to, the younger is to lend to the elder. Why? Because they've lived a little while. Amen? When you talk to your children, they'll say, Mom, Dad, why? You say, "Hun, because I've seen this happen in my life. There's wisdom, knowledge, discernment that you have as the elder versus the younger. Amen? And then, um, and I've got here 2 Corinthians 10, 12, because See, here, the way they do is they measure themselves by themselves, and they compare themselves by themselves. And the Lord says, this is not wise. Not wise. See, the enemy wants you to go against godly wisdom. When it comes to government, he wants you to do the same thing. Go against godly government. Why? Pay taxes. Why do I have to pay taxes? Church, you should never, you know, don't, don't go against that. What do you do? You pay your taxes. You, well, I don't know if I got that. Pray and ask God. He'll provide it. He did for Peter. If there is a place for a fish to have a gold coin in its mouth, he's going to get the money to, for you to pay your taxes. Amen. Okay, all right, so we understand that there is a godly government. So, and two, there's four institutions that God has put together. Free will, he set this up so that people can, that mankind would be preserved. Free will, marriage, family, and nationalism. Why are those four things so important? Because those are the things that God himself has set up for our world. So in Romans 13, 1, it says that here, there he says at the end, he says that these things are ordained by God. 
Government was ordained by God, and I'm talking about godly government, whether the government chooses after it's in power to be righteous or unrighteous. See, we the people have our choice on how we vote. Because, because if, it's, if it's something that you're not sure of, then do your research. Do your research. Find out. It's not a time that we're living in that we should just kind of sit down and say, well, you know, I'm not going to go vote because I don't know who to go vote for. We have a lot of information here at the church for you. So, and in verse 2, it says, whoever believes, whoever therefore, that's talking about the believer or the unbeliever, therefore resist the authorities, resist the ordinances of God, and they that resist shall receive themselves damnation or judgment. And this verse is talking to who? The lawbreakers. It's not talking to the one that keeps the law. And, and what I want to show you, and it's also pertaining to the believer or the non-believer. You know, did, have any of you broken the law since you became saved? Just checking, just checking. Okay. So, so see, you know, and we could go into things like the police, uh, you know, the police force or the military. Um, but if you get in your car... You are to be subject to the laws of that land. If you go from here to Europe, now you can speed really fast. But don't do that here. So we are subject to different things. And why? It's for your protection. Amen? So God has ordained the system of authority. Whether one executes it, uh, the judgment is a believer or a non-believer. They are expected to do right by how God has set up his kingdom. In other words, if you become before a judge and you're a judge, you are to judge according to God's law. What was it we just read in, in 1 Peter? It says, they are to, those people that are in authority are to punish those that do evil, and praise those that do good. Amen. And 13.3, uh, it says, For the rulers, the local, state, or national authorities are not a terror or a threat, threat to good works. See, God is not going to allow authority. He never set his godly authority up to go against people that do good. He always set his authority for, up for so that when you broke the law, there's a consequence. And went there in the scripture in verse 2 where it says judgment. It's not talking about a judgment that, of damnation. It's talking about, you know, it's just like you reap what you sow. There, for whatever sin that you, you know, whatever you're sowing, you're going to reap it. Amen? So the Lord says, you know, for my sake... For my sake, the Lord is saying, I want you to choose good and do good. But if you don't, then I've got people in the land that will use their authority for you to be corrected. Amen? So it's up to us. It's up to us. And it says they are to do good works. But it says they are not a terror or a threat to those who do good works, law-abiding citizens, but to those who do evil. The evil is the lawbreaker. Whatever the land has come up with, and again I say this, this is under godly rule. And I'm going to stop right here, and I'm just going to say this, that so many people, so many Christians right now are very, um, they're very confused because are we to uh, listen to our authority you know, even the Bible tells me to listen to my authority. I just read you those scriptures. That is not what it's saying. If that authority is going against godly authority, you are in no shape or form to go against that. Why? Because God wants you to hold tight to who he is. You are in his kingdom. No matter where you go. If you go from here to Europe, 
to Africa, to swim, I mean, just wherever you may go. You are a child of God, and that will never change. And we're going to talk about here, so, um, in Acts 4, 19 and 20, um, Peter, because Peter, you know, he, <laughs> Peter had a lot of, uh, a lot of issues that the people were very, very upset with him because what he did was he was preaching the gospel about Jesus. And they, you know, there was one that got healed. And so we understand that, you know, when Peter did this in Acts 4.19, um, Peter says, it was Peter and John, it says, whether this is right in the sight of God to listen to you or to rather than to obey God, you must judge for yourselves. But on our part, we cannot stop speaking of the things we have seen and heard. He's talking about the gospel of Christ Jesus. See, you cannot. And so what happened to Peter? They put him in prison. And the moment he got out, the Lord sent him right back to the same leaders that put him in prison. Why? He had an assignment to do. Whatever assignment God has given you, I want you to straighten that backbone up. Start doing what God has asked you to do what, in whatever capacity that may be. You know, it may be with your neighbor. It may be with someone that you're Zooming with. It may be with family, whomever it may be. But, you know, he, he was praying for a gentleman that received, he was able to walk. Now, and so, you know, Peter, and, and if it was me, I would just say, what's wrong with you? You know, this man, God healed this man, but according to you, no, I can't preach this name. And you're t you put me in prison? Well, as soon as I get out, I'm coming right back. See, that's the attitude we should get. See, a lot of people think that, well, yeah, but this is what the government is telling us now. Well, honey, let me tell you something. If that government doesn't line up with the Word of God, where are you? We are right here in the Word. We are going to stand with God's Word. Amen? That's exactly where we're going to stand. And then, you know, and, you know, a lot of people say, because, you know, a lot of people, they're like, well, you know, we have to obey those authorities. You obey the authority if they're under godly order. If they're under ungodly authority, no, it doesn't say that, you know, and when Peter, when Peter came back, he didn't, he didn't go against their authority. What he was doing was he said, now, look, if you say for yourself that that's right, so be it. For me, no, I'm not doing that. See, he didn't go cause the riot. He didn't go call the New Jerusalem Post and say, okay, I need to talk to somebody down there because they treated me wrong, <laughs> right? He, he didn't go do that. He didn't go slander them. He didn't go sin against them. What did he do? He went back to the people. He said, let's pray. Let's pray that we would be bold no matter what they do. Are you to the point in your life, church, that you're going to stand up no matter what they do? That's the place we as the church have to get to. And so a lot of people are saying, well, I just don't know. Well, go read the Word. You know, read this Word as we're reading it today. God wants us to be able to say, look, this is what my Word says, and if you'll stand here, God will protect you. Does that mean the world won't come against you? Jesus said, look, if they came after me, you're going to have to know they're going to come after you. But see, we can't hide in the church. We have to go out and let that light shine. We have to go out and preach the gospel of truth. You preach. What is that? That means you share what God has given to you. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, we're just not, we're not allowed to go against authority. What, where is that in the Bible? I just read to you. That is not what it says. It says if they are there to punish those that are do evil, but to those that are do good, 
You are to praise them. Why? Because they're godly people. They're honoring the system that God has put in place. Man did not put this in place. God did. Well, pastor, you know, some of these things they're doing, you're right, some of these things they're doing are not godly. Then you come here, and you stay under God's rule. Amen? But, you know, I just, I started thinking about people in the Bible, and, you know, I thought of Deborah, you know, and Barak, and he said, you know, I can't go out into battle. I won't go out into battle without you. And she said, well, okay. And God wants us to go against our enemies. Did they stay home? No. Was it male and female? Yes. See, there's a place for every one of us. God, you know why God needs us? He needs every single one that's in the remnant. Every single one. Whether you're two or three years of age, they still can preach. They can preach. Daniel, he would not bow his knee. He said, King, you know, I honor you. See, it doesn't mean that you don't honor them. But what it's saying is, I will not bow my knee to your rule because it goes against God's word. I will not bow my knee to whatever you come up with. Abortion. Oh, it's legal. I don't care if it's legal. My God says, do not kill. Do not murder. Do not take innocent blood. Does God still love those people? Yes, he does. Oh, so much that he sent his son to die on their behalf. You know, is it to where a person can be in the LGBTQ? Yes, you can. But God says that it is evil for a man to be with a man and a woman to be with a woman. Just like he says it's wrong for you to lie. Just like it's wrong for you to gossip. See, you know, so, so God set up, he has set up his kingdom, and he set up his kingdom so that we can be protected. And then I started looking at it because I thought, you know, <laughs> you know, I remember when Moses, is, when Pharaoh come on the scene, the first thing it says there in Exodus is he looked at how many people there were that loved God. And he said, we need to get rid of some of them. What do you think the enemy's doing when he goes through these abortions of 63 million? What do you think he's doing when, when he's telling people don't get married and don't have children? He's trying to tear down the functionality of the family. And so, you know, so he wants to chisel away. But see, God's promise to us is that he'll always have a remnant. And that's you. And he is going to bring that gospel through you. See, I'm here for you. I'm here for you to uplift you, to bring you the word of God, and then to say, go in the name of Jesus. That is your job. Your job doesn't stop when you walk out the doors. It just gets started. Amen. And then, last but not least, our Lord and Savior. He comes into the temple, and there's all the money exchangers. You've got animals. and This is in the temple of God. Jesus walks in there, mild manner reporter that he was. He starts turning the tables. He starts throwing it, throwing the tables out moving all of it out, and he tells them, get out. This is my father's house, and it is a house of prayer. What was he saying? You will honor my father. I am here to see to it. That's our Lord. That's our Savior. And then Jesus, when he's been taken up to heaven, all of his disciples and all the people following him, they were looking at him, and he said, look, God has given me the authority. I now have all authority. I now give it to you. Now go and preach the gospel. Amen? Amen. Whew. I tell you, this is, this is something that the Lord gave me. 
And if you want to remember this, this if, you, if you think about this, it's so true. The Lord said, authority ha that has honor toward me is authority that can be honored. Authority that has honor toward God is authority that can be honored. So if this honor is going toward God, if a government is honoring God, then that is an area that you can honor. Amen? If it's going against God, it is not an area you can honor. Why? Because God will hold you accountable. You can say, oh, I didn't know. Sure you know. You know the difference between right and wrong. We all do. And so in our hearts, we may not have exactly what should or shouldn't be done or said or shouldn't be said. But God is saying, look, I want you to take action. It's time to start standing, church. It's time for us to start moving forward to the, you know, and a lot of people, I hear a lot of, you know, my friends say, well, Pat, what do you think God's going to do in your church? I said, he, it's not, he's going to do it. He's already done it. And these people are moving in it. See, you're moving in what God is asking you to do. And look, if you've not been doing it, repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Grow up. And say, God, I was wrong. Lord, help me. I need area. This is an area that I need some work in. You know what? God has never had a person perfect yet. Not a single one of us are perfect. But our spirit man is perfect because of what Jesus has done for us. But we're striving to do the right thing. We're striving to put our lives as a living sacrifice. This is what Paul was talking about here. And in closing, Jesus 28, uh, 28, 18, where he says, all power has been given to me in heaven and earth. And see, that's how God wants to give to you is his authority. He delegated his authority to you, the believer, to you, the believer. And I just want to leave you with this. When God has de designated his authority to the natural leaders and the earth, he wants them, and he expects them, and he will hold them accountable for ruling godly. So the people that you see that are not ruling godly, just keep watching. Because God will not allow them. And look, church, it's our responsibility, not God's, to pray and ask him to change those things. God says, I've given you that authority. What are you, the church, going to do with the authority that God's given you? Are we going to stand? I believe we will. We're going to stand. We're going we're gonna to take the word of God, and we're going to move forward in it. Amen? Amen. And again, I'm going to read this to you, what the Lord had given to me. Authority that has honor toward God is an authority to be honored. Amen. Do you receive today, church? Amen. All right, let's stand to our feet.